In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. O sacred heart of Jesus. Amen. Immaculate heart of Mary. Saint Joseph, Saint Pius X, Saint Guardian Angels, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And now we can, after this introduction. Uh, this afternoon, we'll try to enter this concretely into this world, mysterious world of Our Lady. And uh, as we have already realized in this vision that she is so above all, we should add a very important uh, argument or an important consideration. Consideration. Uh, if I speak consideration, I have just come, come into my mind, meditation. It is very important that you really meditate. Now, we have not an Ignatian retreat, which brings you a clear method of meditation. We have, uh, however, a lot to read, a lot to uh, receive. You have uh, a bunch of booklets, books, which you have, you have uh, the theme of the retreat, you make hopefully notes. And so, with that, what you hear, together with that, what you read about Our Lady, you have already a lot of work to do in order to make a meditation. In fact, everything should become a meditation. Meditation is to get in deep contact with God, with Our Lord, with Our Lady. Meditation or consideration, or contemplation, whatever you want to call it, or simply mental prayer, is this, this heart to heart, this have in mind that I am in front, in face, in, I am looking into the eyes of somebody. And this somebody is my Lord and my God, is my mother in heaven. So this very important beginning of each meditation, contemplation, uh, mental prayer, is to put yourself into the presence of a God. To look deeply into the heart of Jesus and of Mary. Just to stop thinking about yourself. Now, one thing is interesting. One thing is important. My Lord and my Mother in Heaven. This is very important that we have this in mind. And then, when you start to read something, it's about Our Lady. It's about Our Lord. It's about our, a mystery of Our Lady, or an event in the life of Our Lady, of Our Lord. So we have already the theme. Jesus Christ is here, and now you look to him, and you recall what this means, what he said, what this mystery means, what he gave to Our Lady, what Our Lady did, what Our Lady said. You will meditate the long, during the, 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 this retreat, many, many passages of Our Lady of Fatima. It's very, very simple. Just to, just to recall the events that the words of Our Lady say directly to you. And if you read the Gospel, any Gospel and any event of Jesus Christ is just for me. I'm there. I'm there. I'm looking there. I'm with the Apostles, with the Disciples. With, uh, with Our Lady standing on the footsteps of the cross, or in Bethlehem, on the resurrection, wherever, hearing this word of Jesus Christ, and say to me, and I look to him, I stop, I don't read too, e I, I don't read too, too, too fast, I don't over, over, um, uh, lead, read between the lines or many, many things. Don't put quantity, but quality. Read very, very few, but with, with very few made a lot of jacolate prayer, jacolate prayers, just like Jesus, my Lord. I am reading that, but I don't understand anything. I am so sorry, but you know how stupid I am. So take my poor wooden head and take it entirely to you. Wonderful meditation. You can just say, you know, I have, Father had just a, con a, a meditation. He had just made a conference. My Lord, my Jesus Christ, I didn't understand anything. 
because his English is so awful. So my Lord Jesus Christ, fulfill fill my, my heart with that what you want to say to me. And so you will receive the same graces. It's not so important, you know, that we, that we, that we don't understand this point, that point, or this text, or not that text. It is just, in, in, it's just before her. And the mother knows how to educate you, how to teach you. And sometimes, most of the time, she teaches you what you don't understand in the first moment, and later you understand it. That's the way. So, this consideration of the immense greatness of Our Lady brings us now into, a, into, a, into, into, into the works of God. God created heaven and earth. The Creator. This is that very important thing. God created heaven and earth. That is the belief of all men, if they even not believe, it is a fact. Everybody knows that he has not made himself, that the other, somebody else has made him, has created heaven and earth, and this person, this personality, this incredible being, who has created heaven and earth, must be above all, and we all call him God. These are the proofs of the existence of God, by the way. And so it is clear that there is a, a creator of heaven and earth. We have the privilege to know him, to know who is it that is the most holy trinity. And God created this incredible universe about which most of the people have even not an idea. Therefore also I wanted to show you that vision that you feel them, that you start to realize himself where you are, who you are, and what is that what we name, name creation. When we think creation, we think about the wonders of nature. We think of the flowers and the beautiful landscape here around and of some people. But that's nothing. There's much, much more. And the whole universe and all this incredible, invisible world we always forget, which is so important, the world of the angels, the angels who are with us, the angels who are this, this place is full of them, where Jesus Christ is present here besides all angels are there. They are pure spirits. They fit all together in the one room, you know. It's not a problem for them. Because they are pure spirits and they are everywhere. This is just so great. And now, imagine when we see now how God has arranged from the little dust of nothing. And for him even that atom is not to neglect. He looks with an incredible love of the piece of dust which is here, of the slightest flower and leaf of the last tree you have here around. And how many, are, how many have? Each one is in the hands of God. Even each hair of your wonderful head, or your wonderful hair of your wonderful head, is counted, Jesus Christ says. Incredible! So incredible, this world of God. So we have seen, and above all, it's the queen of heaven and earth. It's her who herself is more than the whole rest of the world together. This is what I wanted to say. That we realize with this, with this flying like an eagle, higher and higher and higher, passing all the creatures up to the highest level and see here an immense ocean without end. Maria. And this ocean is full of God. And the whole, the whole Holy Trinity has its delectations to be with this. And she with him, the Lord with you, Dominus Tecum, and Mary with the Lord. And that makes her so great. And now, just one step more. Just ask yourself, now, how did God do in order to create the creatures? What had God in mind when he decided to create all these little things, all these worlds we have before us, and up to the highest seraphim and cherubim and the highest angels and saints? This is just incredible. So, did God, how did God do? Well, in fact, nobody knows, because God is almighty, and we just know that he says one word, because it's written in the Psalm 148, Ipse dixit et facta sunt. He said one word and everything was created. Everything. But we can, however, have a little insight in this mystery of God. God did it in an incredible manner. And that's the revelation that teaches us this. Then God, if I may dare to say, had before himself an idea. 
We can compare him. Of course, we are always with our Lord Jesus Christ. We are short. It's always a complete the failure if we try to use our poor human terms in order to depict the mystery of God but we have no other I cannot speak in the in the in, I cannot sp I can speak you in Spanish I can speak you in Popolsku I can speak you in Parusku I can speak you in, in German I can speak you I don't know in what kind of language I cannot speak the, la the language of the angels and if God would speak it he would do that would not understand it so what, what shall I say? I take the poor human man, the, 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 the human, human, human words, and then it's so mean, so little. But Jesus Christ himself uses them, so I dare to do it the same, and the saints. So God behaves like an architect. The architect, the architect is now first composing his cathedral. That's what the wonderful thing. I remember always the cathedral from Germany in Cologne. The Cathedral von Cologne has been built in the 19th century, as she is, and a wonderful thing. The idea, the concept, the architect of this cathedral has been made in the 12th century and had never been built like that. It had begun, never finished, only the 19th century. So you see, the architect is absolutely important because he composes, he makes the picture, he makes the concept. The concept, the concept of the way. I, I use the word concept very purposely. He makes, you know, the plan. He makes a wonderful plan. The plan is very detailed. If an architect wants to build a house or even a, 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 an important uh, palace, the, 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 the plans of the architect are absolutely sophisticated, very complicated and very detailed. He has foreseen all the details up to the deepest foundations and the roof and everything is very clearly made. And those who will do the work, they have just to apply these rules and do the things according to this plan. So we would say God had first a plan before him and afterwards he would realize this plan. He is not like an architect in this world. The architect makes the plan, but then you have thousand other people who must realize it. One man cannot do that. God is the architect and the builder. And that is the mystery of God. And in God is not first being architect to make a plan and afterwards to build. So he does it all in one. But we have to distinguish. So when God has the plan for him, look now, God our best of the Father who plans the world with the Son and the Holy Ghost. Let's make like this. And so he imagines, you know, this America, I will build it like this. And here I will put the best, the best, the best wine yards here in that place. And here I make the big peaks of the mountains exactly this way. And here behind Denver, and the Prairie will finish, and then I will make so wonderful stones you will find nowhere else in the world. And so on, so on, so on. So, of course, God doesn't know to discuss with his son how to do it. It's all in one. It's just so much in everything. So now, please understand one thing. In the beginning of the, of the works of God, and this is what you have to understand. I try to, I will try to find the text now. Yes. Read the, like, the epistle from the 8th of December. Immaculate Conception. You are uh, astonished. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways. Before he made anything from the beginning. I was set up from eternity. And of old before the earth was made. The deaths were not as yet. And I was already conceived. Neither had the fountains of waters yet sprung out. The mountains with their huge bulk had not as yet been established. Before the hills I was brought forth. He had not made the earth, nor the rivers, nor the poles of the world. When he prepared in his plans the heavens, I was present. When with a certain law and compass he encloses the depths, we see the wisdom of the architect. When he established the sky above and poised the fountains of waters, when he compassed the sea with its bounds and set the law to the waters that they should not pass their limits, when he balanced the foundations of the earth, I was with him 
forming, ordering all things. That's incredible. That's the Holy Bible, and it's written about Our Lady. So you know what that means. The plan of the architect, the wonderful plan of the whole world, of all angels, saints, and men, and the all visible world, all the galaxies from the beginning to earth up uh, at the end until the last atom at atom until the last flower and leaf god has composed that according to a plan the plan he had before himself and when we realize the plan to put the things in reality he has just to see his plan and this plan is mary it's a concept god has about the whole creature and the concept in Latin is conceptio, conception. And this conceptio is immaculate, is pure, is perfect. Do you want to know what is the absolutely perfect, perfect idea of God about you? You have to look into Our Lady's heart. There you have yourself as immaculate, as the immaculate plan of you is there. An outstanding thing. So we have a miracle. God is God. And God doesn't need anything, anybody. But from the very beginning, God reveals us. We would never, never have the idea about this if God would not say it. But if he says us to us, we have we fall down our knees and again praise. Praise that art, that, uh, that, that masterpiece of God who is Our Lady, who has also became the previous plan of all beings. The plan the architect has made before all things in his mind. If he would dare to say, if there would any any succession in the life of God, but it isn't. It is all the same, in the same ma manner. Therefore, you cannot say that Our Lady has been created long, long after the creation of heaven and earth. It's true. Our Lady as her, but the idea of Our Lady, that God what he has in mind, who is Our Lady, is in all eternity. And for God to create Our Lady in the middle of the world, in the middle of times, and to have Our Lady in mind in the, before all the beginnings of the time, is for God all the same. Because he is eternal. No before, no afterwards, no change. For us stupid people, we have no idea to understand that. But it is like that. And you have to receive it. You must accept like this. Because God says to you, finish. And now, you see, from the very beginning, who are you, Immaculata? And then I look around, around the creature and I see this flower, this man, this person. Sometimes we see that, we can gaze on that if we see very rarely some children. Children who, who in the beginning of their life, of, of maybe around their first communion, are really, really almost like angels. It's not very often. They are really born, uh, several fathers uh, who have schools say that really they become le be better like monsters, you know. But sometimes you have this exception, as amongst all kind of wonderful flowers, you have such, really one, such an incredible beauty. You have seen so many roses, but suddenly you meet a rose, which is so incredibly more beautiful than all the others. When I was in Africa, I was astonished, you know, there's, it's all, all, all jungle. Jungle with the woods, with the trees and the forest 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 and all the same thing is boring like that and suddenly before you stands the giants. You have a tree which is, which is just without end. You look before up, it is ten times higher than all the other trees. Go straight. It's absolute perfect form from the beginning to the end. Beautiful, majestic, and so on. Such, such exceptions in the history of the world show us that is, that is so. You know, if you see such a beautiful thing, and you say the ideal of all roses, of all lilies, of all flowers, of all greatness, of beautiful, of all, all trees, of all mountains, of, and of all stars in the skies, and of all the rivers and waterfalls and whatever you have in this earth, in the beauties of nature, the original, beautiful, most plan, most beautiful plan, the perfect plan of these things and of these beings is her. It's not her, her idea, it's herself. 
Who are you, Immaculata? We are just going from, from un no understanding to another understanding. Therefore, St. Maximilian Kolbe, he has this wonderful prayer, you know, that Jesus Christ, for thou, God created the world, you know. And that, what is this? Uh, let me just find it. Um, yes, she says, Allow me to praise you, O most Virgin Mary, St. Maximilian Kolbe. In you alone is God worshipped incomparably, incomparably more than in all his saints. For you, God created the world. For you, God also called me into existence. Why is such a good fortune granted to me? Oh, let me praise you, most blessed virgin. This is understandable only on the background of this reality. That Our Lady is the causa exemplaris, as says the theology. The exemplar, the picture, the, 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 the ideal, the, 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 the primary plan of all creation. According to which God, according to this example, God has created all things, and you and me. It's so beautiful when you say, I'm such a wretch, my mother Mary, when I come to you and I come closer to you, I feel a little better, so I'm a little bit closer to my previous being, what I should, I should be. And so I have the hope, when I come closer to Our Lady, maybe once I would reach at, last, at least 10% of that, what God wanted me to be, 10%. Okay, you see, but Our Lady, she has patience with us, and she must love us. Because it's her own greatness, her own perfection, which is, in fact, finally copied by each one of us. And this is the other idea. We are all, in fact, copies of Our Lady, images, icons of Our Lady. This is the beautiful thing that I wanted to like to say to you in the first moment when I said to you that Our Lady, you know, said to us, Jesus wants to use you to make me known and loved. I think. Our Lady has just one desire, that you all who are here will become, through this retreat, much more, much more perfect, much better icons of her. The closer you come to Mary, the closer you come to your own perfection, what God has thought about you from all eternity, with your personality, with your absolute unique being, which has not to be reproduced by no cloning by no anything which is similar you are just unique and this being unique is that what you are already real in our lady's heart so you have to go to her and god to become real what you are but yourself what a wonderful thing so saying this we go a step further yes you know god created heaven and earth of course according to this picture but this picture is wonderful when, when the world was created, then there was a paradise. I know I understand why Grignion de Montfort calls Mary the paradise of God. Of course, she, she, the paradise we had in the very beginning, when God created our first parents, it was a paradise. It was a, 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 a world of delectation without, without any sin, without any death without any harm, without any jealousy, without any pride, without any sickness, without any mosquitoes, without any heat, and so on. Huh? That's it. And, 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 and that all was an almost perfect already image, you know, realization of this first plan. And then came the disaster, as you know very well. And that is the history. God had in mind just one thing. For what God created all that? Because just when I say God created the world according to these patterns, which I explained, the plan, the previous plan, the immaculate plan, the immaculate conception of the world, it's Our Lady. But for what? For what such an immaculate conception? For what such a beautiful world? For what such perfect galaxies and worlds and cosmoses and angels and men? For what? Not to live forever behind or below or besides God in an autonomic world, as would say later Freemasonry and awful Vatican II, which is the 
pop the, 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 which is the Freemasonry and brought into the church. It's very horrible to say that it's the will of God that the great God created man for himself. Never, but never any creature, creature had been created for herself. And so, my dear friends, it is very important to see that the purpose of all this is that this whole world God created was created outside God because God cannot, he cannot, what he is, he is for all, for all eternity. But he wanted in his love to share his incredible happiness and his, his great wonderful being and his absolute divine life which is all love, which is almighty love, which is light overwhelming, where you have only, only happiness without end. We have just, again, I, I just look for words. I would like to speak it now in other languages. I can't. It's just um, terribly mean and little what I say. But this God wants now the greatest people because these, 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 these beams, God, they are not God, so they are outside somehow from God, but not outside because without him they cannot live. He is inside them, but however they are not God. But he has created them like in, in order to give them, to make them the highest of them, men and angel, to be created as pictures of God, as images of God, as a similitude of God. Ad imaginem et similitudinem meam, God created us. And this image and this similitude of God is for what? For that one purpose that God in his incredible love and mercy wanted these nothings, these absolute nothings, become children of God. His own children, sons of God, his own sons. Moment, there is only one son. And this one son is his only begotten son. So God, in his incredible love, he wanted that the son will be the eldest of brothers and that he will have members of his own mystical body, of his own body. And this is the church, that is the kingdom of the son, that is the kingdom of God. In other words, God will create us only for heaven, that we will pass a certain time in this creation and this creation is just for a while. Just for a little while. The creation is, fun, is, is, is absolutely nothing in comparison to what God wants to make. Now I am in a trouble. <laughs> Good to have that, but I need maybe tomorrow I will have the others. Anyway, what I, what I paint you, nobody understands, so it's not a problem. No, 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 it's okay. The great, the great thing, what you have to see is this return to God. God has put ourselves again poor human words I, I'm getting get, I'm get, I'm, I'm get now a, a little bit uh, angry on myself I cannot give you better words than this and it's probably not because of my, my, my poor English because simply there is no words anymore to say in this human language in order to depict this just God put us outside ourselves the, the theology says this exitus you get out of ourselves, you start an own existence, an own life, completely of God dependent of God, who must give you everything in that moment, but it's however your life. It's your soul, it's your heart, it's your blood, it's your body, your soul, it's your hair, it's your nose, but it's yours. But all this, God gives you. He allows you to exist. Never any moment with it without this intervention of God who gives you now at this moment everything that your atoms are working, that your are breathing and your heart is beating and your eyes are seeing and your soul is there. That's God's work. However, it's you. That you may now imitate God. You may now do what God does for eternity. That is what God expects from you. And that is what that he wants from you just one thing. One thing. Yes, I want. That's all. He gives you all with Yes, I want. He gives you the paradise. He gave the paradise to our first parents. And then it's just, yes, I want. They will comply. They will fulfill his will. They are all happy with all what they get from God. And just, yes, they want. And this, this, this yes, this constant yes, to the will of God is the act of love. And so only we are similar to God. 
And so in this way only we are image of God. As long as we have not said yes, we have not yet accomplished the, that act, that action which makes us children of God, which makes us allowing, uh, is allows us to join him finally. For the angels, this yes is just one. If this yes is said, all the world of angels comes from an un unknown happiness they had before into the eternal happiness they have now. If they pass the test and say yes. And you know what happens. You know what happens. The highest of all angels say no. Now, what's going on there? God wants us so much to be with him. This is the destiny of all men. And nobody can change it. God created us for his own glory. Now let's come back to the vision. The vision you have seen is our destiny. You are not only the eager to have a beautiful dream uh, journey up to the highest top of creation who is our lady in his majesty in her majesty and then before god like nothing and god's incredible endless 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 majesty and greatness and divinity no you shall fill be filled with the fullness of God, with the whole fullness of God. God will take you from the nothing and will you make grow and grow and grow and grow up to the top. And all those who have received the belief and believe in him, he gives the right and the grace to be called children of God. That is the end of each Mass. At the last gospel, you hear it anyway. Quick, quick, quod, quod, receperundeum, dedi deis potestatem, filios dei fili. He gives them, fili, he gives them the potestas, the power to become sons of God. Sons of God in the only begotten Son. Similar to Jesus Christ. My dear faith friends, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm really no idea. I say, my Lord Jesus Christ, I believe with all my heart. But what that will be, it's just so overwhelming. But it's so overwhelming that it fills us with joy. Because remember, when St. Bernard sees Our Lady, who is this queen in heaven and earth, and appears to her, and she sees Our Lady for one second, and Bernard will afterwards say to have seen the, 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 the face and the the, the face of Our Lady, and Our Lady for one little minute. All pleasures on earth, all joy and happiness which you can imagine in this world is trash, nothing in comparison to have seen for a little moment the face of Our Lady. Now, you see, we speak about things which are really incredibly true. And that is the destiny of man. And now look, what happened in the heaven? What happened there? What, 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 what is that? What, 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 what these poor angels, they have not created, been created as pure spirits with all the knowledge God would ever give to the world. Had they to learn anything as we? No. They had the fullness of knowledge. And there were these angels in the nine choirs and the highest of all, the highest of all, who has called, been called the man who is responsible for the light of God. No idea what that means, but it must be ha incredible. What a power! Lucifer, that was his name. And then, and then you say, God needed from all the angels, as afterwards he needs from us, the answer, the yes. And so God asks a question, because you cannot answer yes if you get another question. Then the question was there. And what a question God gave them. What was the test? The test. Nobody knows. God didn't reveal us. We have a lot of doctors of the church who say it's certainly our, linked with our Lord Jesus Christ and it's probably linked with Our Lady. Now if you hear that Our Lady has become, according to the will of God, and that is the truth of faith, the Queen of Heaven and Earth and the Queen of Angels, and all the angels are submit, subject to her, and kneel down before her as before her queen, then it's very logic that the test was recognize this. Now to recognize for such a such a king of our angels that they will have a queen which is which is like a little nothing. 
What is a man in comparison with an angel? Forget it. It's just dust. And what is a little woman in comparison with all the angels? It's even less dust. And now, now this little thing must be my queen. I must submit myself to her, kneel down before her, and ex execute her orders. No. No, no. That's not fair. Whatever he may have said in heaven, before God, we know the answer. And that is really the truth. We can so easily imagine, and say Maximilian Kohlberg of those, who is, um, who is uh, convinced that that was happening like that, when he says that the angels have seen the Blessed Mother with our Lord Jesus Christ. You know? And then they have seen him, and because Our Lady was supposed to become their queen, and Jesus Christ, the head of all creation, they wouldn't accept this. This is the first pride which brought them immediately to hell. Praise be Saint Michael the Archangel, who is like God. Saint Major Michael the Archangel brought, come, came into the defense of Our Lady. And Our Lady, he is now, she is now the beloved, the most beloved after Jesus Christ, not yet born, not yet born. Both of them, Jesus Christ has to be born from her. But praise the beloved because it's them who brought them to the glory they have. They said yes to the destiny of God, to the will of God, and then all the angels. And what is the joy of the angels now, in an all eternity? That we have said yes, that we have received this queen, and we are the most privileged to be at the footstep of this queen and praise her forever and ever. And she becomes the mediatrice of all our angelic graces. So great she is he. So we are so happy. And that is the angels. They will thank Our Lady in a special way that she had become exactly that queen. And they accepted it. It was very, in my eyes, it was very easy to say yes. Much more difficult for Eve afterwards, you know, when the devil is tempting her. Anyway, you see, I don't want it to be too long for this evening because I see that your eyes become a little bit like a, a pious cow. <laughs> Now, and so, so excuse me, I, I don't want to continue this, but it, it's very important that we are coming to start to speak about God's works. And we have just begun, we have not yet started with that, where, where the story of Our Lady starts, where Our Lady's story starts. It starts with the, in, with the incarnation, with the association. Here Our Lady comes forth. No, long time before, before the visible world has been created. So, my dear friends, my dear ladies, you can imagine when these first insights with the saints bring so much light into our life. You see, why is it so important to think about these angels? Because here you have the origin of evil. And you have the origin of evil and the overcoming of evil. Already in the angelic world, it is clear that the power to overcome every evil which is a no to God is Our Lady. So afterwards you will see when our first parents fall into sin it's the same thing God answers. He must curse them. He must throw them out of the paradise. The paradise will finish and never exist anymore here on earth. Yes, and they will have a miserable life and they will have a disaster because of this original sin. But But, you know, in this moment of the worst of, let me say, worst of punishments. And God is so merciful and he gives the answer. But you devil. And gives the answer in a moment, you know. He doesn't console Adam and Eve. He curses the devil. And how? You, you have, you have deceived me in heaven. And the angel, uh, Saint Mark Michael Archangel, was faithful to the queen. And now she will crash your head. You will see all what you are doing here in this world in order to get the people down and dragging down to hell as you have tried with Adam and Eve. I tell you, you can be sure. Now she will come and you will not overcome her. And you will be punished and humiliated because it's a woman. The woman and her seed and she will smash your head. And you, 
you will do what you can. You can hurt her at the, uh, at the, at the, at the feet, but she will finally completely crush you. And whenever you want to be strong against this powerful devil and these powerful powers of darkness, you have just one chance. The virgin, the mother, the queen from the very beginning of the existence of the world, she is there. So you see, what is our beautiful Catholic religion? Is the religion of our Lord with Mary. Our Lord Jesus Christ with his mother, of the most holy, tr holy trinity, with the beloved daughter of the Father, with the mother of the Son and the spouse of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Amen. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Um, please go to the chapel for your evening prayer.